Welcome to Seagull Maritime's series on elementary first aid. In this video, you will look at how to recognize a heart attack or cardiac arrest and how to perform CPR on a casualty. Throughout, you will be asked to pause the video and reflect on what you have seen and heard. Ideally, you should watch this with at least two of your colleagues so that you can engage in group discussion. CPR is an emergency procedure used on casualties suffering from a heart attack or cardiac arrest to preserve the casualty's body for defibrillation. Heart attacks and cardiac arrests normally occur when one of the coronary arteries becomes blocked by a blood clot, preventing oxygen from reaching part of the cardiac muscle. The lack of oxygen causes the muscle to die forcing the rest of the heart to work harder to keep the supply of oxygen going to the body. Eventually, as the heart rate increases, the contractions become less effective and the heart stops working. When you suspect a heart attack or cardiac arrest has occurred, you must approach the casualty as you would in any emergency first aid circumstance. If there is an AED on board your vessel, it is essential that it is used as quickly as possible. Request that it is brought to your location when you raise the alarm or ask a fellow crew member to prepare it while you start CPR. With a heart attack, the casualty will be conscious and breathing. They will be able to describe their signs and symptoms, such as crushing pain in the center of the chest, radiating down the arm or into the neck, jaw or shoulder, nausea, vomiting and breathlessness. However, if a cardiac arrest has occurred, the casualty will be unconscious, not breathing, and they will need CPR. Start by opening the casualty's airway. Place one hand on the forehead, two fingers on the point of the chin, and tilt the head back. Check for breathing by lowering your head over the casualty's face, looking down on the chest, and using the look, listen, feel technique. If the casualty is not breathing normally, they require CPR. Sometimes the casualty can appear to be breathing, but it is noisy and they may only take a breath once every 10 seconds. This is called agonal breathing and is not normal. If this type of breathing is happening, or if you are in any doubt about it, do CPR. Doing chest compressions means that you are taking over the contraction of the heart. When you compress the chest, you are squeezing the heart between the sternum and the spine, forcing the blood out. When treating a casualty suffering from a heart attack or cardiac arrest, why is it important to begin cardiopulmonary resuscitation as soon as possible? Click the pause button and start your discussion. To start CPR, place the heel of your hand on the center of the chest, approximately between the nipples, and place the other hand on top, interlinking your fingers. Make sure you are close to the casualty, up on your knees, with your arms straight to make sure you can get the right depth of compression. Push down on the chest to a depth of 5 to 6 centimeters, at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. With a very large or very small casualty, you should compress to one-third of the depth of the chest. Start with 30 compressions. This should take about 15 seconds. Open the airway again and deliver two rescue breaths by placing your mouth across the casualty's mouth, making sure you have a full seal and breathe out. Only deliver a breath, do not blow. Watch to see if the chest rises when you breathe. If the breath does not get through and there is no movement of the chest, open the airway further and deliver the second breath. If you hear gurgling when you deliver the breaths, the casualty may vomit. 
This tends to happen if the airway is not open properly, as air is then forced into the stomach, where it mixes with the stomach contents and causes vomiting. If this happens, turn them onto their side so the vomit runs out of the mouth. When they are finished, carry on. As soon as you have delivered two breaths, whether successful or not, resume compressions and carry on with the cycle of compressions and breaths. If there are two of you, swap the person doing the CPR every two minutes, which should be about eight cycles. Continue until you are exhausted and can't carry on, someone arrives to take over or tells you to stop, or the casualty begins to show signs of recovery. Imagine you are in a scenario where a casualty is face down and you suspect a spinal injury. They have suffered a cardiac arrest. What steps would you take to administer first aid? Click the pause button and start your discussion. The routine for CPR is the same for everyone. The only exceptions are with a baby or child, or with a casualty pulled from the water. These casualties will have no oxygen in their blood, so you need to put some in before starting compressions. Begin with five rescue breaths, and then go into the 30 compressions, two rescue breath cycle. Follow this procedure, and you'll have every chance of saving a life.